Hey guys, so today's video, we are talking about rules. I kind of came up with this bold idea to say that there are no rules. None. We don't really have to do anything. There is no should do anything. And I'm gonna tie this specifically to marriage, but I mean, it applies to everything in life. So let me tell you what got me thinking about this. Um, about a week ago, I was really annoyed at CJ for something and I was talking to my friend about it and she was like, oh my gosh, he definitely should do this. When you sign up to be a husband or a father, like you have to do this, you should do that. These are just like the rules. And it dawned on me that I was sitting here complaining to her about something and then when she said that, I ended up actually being like, oh, you know what? I take it back. I don't have any reason to be annoyed. I don't have any reason to be mad because there are no rules. So I already made a video talking about expectations in marriage and how we shouldn't expect anything of our spouse. So this is very similar to that, but I just want to go a little bit deeper into it. Have you guys noticed that a lot of times when I talk about the church, for example, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I talk about things that people struggle with, things that I notice, things that I see, and I come on here in my videos and I try to like correct those things or just share my opinion about those things. And I get a lot of responses and comments from people who live in other countries and they say to me, we don't have that problem in the church here at all. Like that must just be a Utah thing. But it's like, I don't live in Utah. <laughs> but I think in general, comment and tell me if you guys agree with this. If you've lived in multiple different countries, I think is really the biggest thing. In America, and especially in the church in America, in American culture, in church culture, there are norms, there are standards, there are rules that I guess like society has set for us and we follow them. And if something goes against that norm, then we think it's bad, it's not right, it's not okay, it's like just this inherent like common sense rule but the thing is that rule doesn't exist like when you think about again tying it to like marriage and family what does the family proclamation say husbands and wives are to be equal partners but i've made video about that before and like again that's kind of up to like the couple to decide there is no rule that says in order to be an equal partner you both do the dishes you both do the laundry you both work on the car I personally think being an equal partner is more of like a mindset and an attitude and it's more about how you treat your spouse and less about what you do tit for tat. He does 10 things, I do 10 things, therefore we're equal. It says to raise children in love and righteousness. Fathers are to preside. Again, kind of up to like your interpretation of the word preside. Provide, does that mean that the father has to be like the breadwinner and go out and make most of the money? I know a lot of families who the wife makes more money or the dad is the one who stays home. Protect, does that mean mothers do nothing? <laughs> and they'll just like be willy-nilly, no care in the world, because it's not my job to protect my family, it's my husband's job? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not very specific, so therefore, there aren't really tons of rules for family life. What does respect mean? What does love mean? It means you don't degrade someone, you give them basic human decencies, no abuse, privacy, boundaries. And then in general, in the gospel, we know that the second commandment is to love. First commandment is to love God, second commandment is to love everyone. So what does that mean? Being respectful, being kind. We are told not to judge. We are required to forgive everyone. Like that's pretty much it. Everything else, even those things, those commandments, those aren't even rules. Jody Moore in the Better Than Happy podcast calls them strategies. God sent us here. We agreed to a plan. Now how are we going to fulfill that plan? How are we going to see that plan out and be successful in it? God gave us strategies. Here are the strategies, the commandments, the word of wisdom, those things, again, not rules. We don't have to follow them, but it's a strategy. And that's kind of what I think the rules are in marriage. You really don't have to do anything. Just because you got married and you became a parent doesn't automatically mean you are required to do A, B, C through Z. However, if you want to live a happy family life, then yes, it's important to figure out the strategies like love languages that will help your spouse to be happy, communicating love to them in the way they like to receive it. The family proclamation does say 
happiness is most likely to be achieved when you use these things. It gives you strategies. One of them is wholesome recreation. Again, up to your family to decide what is wholesome and what is recreational for us. What do we like to do for fun? together as a family. Work, what does that mean within my family? Does that mean we do like service projects? Does that mean we do like DIY projects? Still, not a rule. Nothing says you have to do any certain thing or even do those things together. And I think, again, going along with expectations, when we create this idea in our minds that there's a rule, that a husband has to do this or a husband can't do this, then you have that expectation and if the person doesn't meet it, then you're gonna be disappointed. And everyone around you, if they hold that same rule, they'll be disappointed if that rule isn't kept. So for example, let's take one that is controversial. The idea that a husband, a man, can't tell a woman how to look. Uh, that could be a man saying, I prefer long hair over short hair. I prefer blonde hair over brunette hair. Do you see I'm going with these controversial things that people think it's horrible that CJ tells me he has an opinion on these things. First of all, there's no rule that says I have to like do what he says or do what he likes. I could say, cool, don't care. I'm gonna do what I wanna do, which I do <laughs> some of the time if I want to. Some of the time I don't care, so I'll be like, okay, if you like it, sure, why not? I'll do that. But some women hold this rule that no, you can't tell me how I should look. And to a certain extent, like I'll agree with you on that. My high school boyfriend was so controlling. Like he would literally be mad at me and like emotionally and verbally abusive if I did something that he told me not to do, like wear a skirt or a dress or yoga pants. He would call me a dumb hoe and say I was just looking for attention. And anyway, like that, that is abusive. So that's not being respectful. That is a problem. But even if your husband said, I'd like it if you lost some weight, why would that be bad? He's not saying he doesn't love you. He's not saying he doesn't think you're beautiful. He's not saying you're a bad person. And you get to choose whatever you wanna do with that. Again, there is no rule saying, if my husband says this, then that means I have to do something about it. Totally up to you. But these like cultural and societal social rules that we have saying these things, it's just not real. So I'll give you the example of what I was frustrated at CJ about. There was a birthday party that Ireland and I were invited to go to and CJ doesn't know who the little kid is. He doesn't even know who the little kid's parents are, but the birthday party was on the weekend. So CJ was home. He was available to go. I did spring it on him like literally at the very last second. I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this birthday party. I really think we should go. And he said, go ahead. If you want to do that, you can totally go do that. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Just stay at home then? Why don't you come with me? He goes, I don't know them. I don't want to do that. And my first reaction is, life's not all about you. Life's not about what you want. It's the weekend. We're a family. We do stuff together as a family. That's the rule. The rule is if I'm going to go somewhere, you have to come with me, which is definitely not true. <laughs> He does things on the weekend that I don't do. Saturday mornings, he goes and plays basketball. You don't see him telling me, babe, it's 6 a.m., get your butt out of bed, get the kids, let's go. I wanna play basketball, so you need to come with me. <laughs> I'd be like, you go do that, you have fun, which is the exact same thing he did with the birthday party. It's like, if that's the thing you wanna do, go for it. I'm not gonna hold you back. You know, can you imagine if it were vice versa? If CJ said to me, no, it's the weekend, we have to do stuff together, you need to stay home with me. That would totally be in his right to say that. But for some reason, in my mind and in the mind of my friend, and I think in the mind of a lot of women and mothers, we think that we kind of make the rules for what we're doing with our family. I've shared a similar example of when I said, come on, babe, we're going to the park today. Let's go to the park. And that didn't interest him. And again, I'm thinking, too bad, it's not about you. It's about doing what I wanna do. It's about doing what our kids wanna do. I know it's not fun for you, but when you're a parent and a husband, you don't get to just do whatever you want. You have to do what other people want. But why? <laughs> There's literally no rule that says, once you become a husband, you have to do everything your wife wants. That's so not true. Once you become a father, you have to do everything your kid wants. Again, not true. If that were the case, our kids would be spoiled brats if every single time they said, I wanna do this, I want that, take me here, buy me this, buy me that. We have to say no. And it is within our right to say, not today, I'm gonna do something that I wanna do instead. So it's kind of a hard like paradigm for me to shift to, to say, oh, okay, I'm watching TV shows and movies where there's this like norm, this expectation, this rule. 
on social media. I see a lot of husbands doing this thing, which kind of sets an expectation or a rule. I hear people talking about things that they get mad at their husbands for, and I'm like, okay, so, so that's a thing. It's bad if a husband does this. There's some rule saying our husbands can't do this, and it's just not true. There are no rules. Think about it this way. Think about if my husband said, you have to have sex with me every day, twice a day. You agreed to marry me. That's your duty as a wife. I think there are some husbands who say that, but it's just not true. There is no rule that says that. The only rule regarding sex and marriage is that you should not do it until you're married. And then once you're married, you can. That's it. Nothing says about what you can do in the bedroom, can't do in the bedroom, how often you should do stuff. Like, th there's just no rule about that. There is no rule that says you have to have an orgasm every time and that if you don't, it's bad sex. Sorry, I'm going on a sex tangent here. This is like getting PG-13. What if my husband said, you chose to be a stay-at-home mom? You're home all day, that means you need to keep the house clean. When I come home, the house should be clean because you're here all day. You don't have to go to work. You have every ability to clean, so the house should be clean when I get home. I don't have to do anything. Just because I chose to stay at home doesn't mean I'm gonna sit here and have my house be sparkling clean every second, especially by the time you get home. But for some reason, I think women tend to just set a lot of rules. And in the church, there are a lot of like cultural norms and rules. And a lot of these things just aren't real. They don't exist. We just make them up in our head. And then we all jump on board and do it. And it's actually harmful. Something that I love is when it comes to body image, women are breaking the rules saying that you have to be a certain size or not have cellulite or not have stretch marks or not have any jiggle in order to wear a bikini. All you need to wear a bathing suit is a body. That's it. You can wear whatever type of bathing suit you want that you feel comfortable in, that you think you fit in, that you are happy in. There is no rule saying you can only wear a bikini if you look like this. So that's awesome. And I hope that we can continue to destroy these rules that don't really exist because I think they just cause a lot of harm, a lot of disappointment, a lot of expectations that only lead to conflict because we all are gonna fail. Now, a lot of people when they get married, when they start their family, they do wanna set some sort of expectations or rules. Like for our family, we set the rule that we don't swim on Sunday. And now that's really hard to do, especially in Arizona where it's so hot. There isn't a whole lot else to do on a Sunday. That's just a rule we've set. No one else said that for me. The church didn't say that. I can't do that, but that's a rule that we set. So we do hold ourselves to that standard. Again, I talked about this in the expectation video, but if you and your spouse agree on something, this is what I want. So I'm gonna hold you to that expectation, hold you to this rule. Do you agree to it? Do you accept it? Yes, okay, we're holding each other accountable. So that's why like for my marriage, when it comes to weight, CJ and I set that rule that it is okay for him to talk to me about my body and it's okay for me to talk to him about his body, to keep each other in check, to help each other hit our goals. Now I think delivery matters there. Okay, that doesn't mean I can say, ew, you're so skinny, you need to work out harder because you look gross. That's not coming from a place of kindness, love and respect. That's just how it works in my marriage. Going back to the like birthday party in the park example, saying to CJ, it would make me feel really loved and make me really happy if you came and did this with me. I know you don't want to, I know it won't be fun for you, but it would mean a lot to me if we got to do this together because we don't get a lot of time with you. And so then he would come with me because he wants to be the type of husband who shows me he loves me. And if I communicate to him what he has to do to show me he loves me, he wants to do it. And that's awesome. I think the biggest takeaway, and I could probably make a whole separate video on this, is that we need to speak, say what we want. There can't be some like unsaid rule and expectation that we're just holding inside. And then if the person doesn't even live up to that rule or that expectation, and then we're mad. Like I seriously was so livid at CJ for not coming to that birthday party with me. But I never even communicated to him that first of all, that I wanted him to go. All I said was, we should go. And he was like, no thanks. And so I was just like, okay, well, I'm going. And then when I came home, I still didn't communicate to him that I was upset. These rules and expectations and like these unsaid things that we've let other people or society set for us, it really does nothing but create poor communication and therefore conflict. So if we are just saying like 99.9% .9 of what we think and what we feel, then those problems will be avoided because there will be no rule. We will say 
what we want and we'll say what we mean. And again, I've talked about this before. It's up to us to decide it. It can't come from anyone else. What works in someone else's marriage, whatever expectations they have agreed upon, cool. Maybe I like them and I want to adapt some of them in our marriage, but maybe I don't. What works for me in my marriage isn't gonna work for other people in their marriages. And that's okay too. Just a little side note. We cannot judge others for the rules that I have set for myself. So I don't swim on Sunday. Does that mean if you swim on Sunday, I'm gonna judge you? No. If you wanna have a party, swim, I'll say, awesome, you have fun, but we don't go to swimming parties on Sunday because we don't swim. That's it. I can't hold someone else to my standard that I hold for myself. And I definitely can't judge them for not living up to my standard, my role, my expectation. Just like I have a certain way of eating. I buy certain groceries. I eat certain foods. If I see someone else not doing that same thing, cool, no judgment. They've said their way of doing things, they can do that. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm so intrigued to hear if people have lived in other countries and different cultures, if you agree that the societal, cultural rules and norms are totally different. Really, I think it's just totally up to us to decide how we wanna live our lives, say what we think, say what we feel, say what we mean, be honest with our spouses and our families so that we can be happy. All right, that's it. See you guys next time. Bye.